Hello, my name is John Myers, and in this video, I'm going to show you the super hacky, incorrect way to revalidate data in Remix. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do it properly using the brand new user revalidator hook at the end of the video. So why would you actually want to do this? Remix does a great job of calling all of our loaders before the page is rendered, so why would we want to be in charge of calling these loaders ourselves? Well, what if something happens client-side, like the user signs in using Superbase, for example? They're now seeing the old version of the page because Remix doesn't know that anything has changed and therefore hasn't called our loaders again to get fresh authenticated data. If we refresh the page, we'll see the correct authenticated state because Remix calls those loaders on load. But again, if we click sign out, we're still seeing the data that we shouldn't be able to see as a signed out user until we refresh the page again. So let's look at how we can use actions to force Remix to fetch fresh data when the state of our user changes and then how we do this properly using the use revalidator hook. Let's start by creating a new Remix application using the create Remix package. We're going to call this one revalidating on demand. And this is going to step us through some questions. They shouldn't matter too much for this example, but I'm going to say just the basics. I'm then going to select a Remix app server. I'm going to use TypeScript and I want to run npm install. And once that's finished, we can change into our directory and open it in VS Code. And this has created a basic Remix application for us. In our app folder, we'll find our routes. And we're going to start with our index.tsx route. We can remove all of this boilerplate here that we have and instead just render out a button which has the text load in it. And now we can start our development server by typing npm run dev, and then we can head on over to our browser and navigate to localhost over port 3000. And we should see our load button, which does nothing when we click it. Now, if we export out a loader from our index route here, and then in our loader, we can just console log fetching data for index loader, and we need to remember to explicitly return null from our loader. Now, essentially what we want to do is when we click this button, we want to be able to call our loader. But obviously this isn't going to work because this click handler happens in the user's browser and this loader is running server side. Now, the way that I used to do this and the way that I need to update in my latest Egghead course, which just came out, which you can check out for free over at egghead.io, where we build a real-time chat app with Superbase and Remix. There's a link in the description. But the way that I programmatically called a loader in that course was a little bit of a hack. Remix will automatically call any active loaders anytime an action completes. So we can create a new route and we can call this one handle validate.tsx. And now if we only export an action from this route, then it will only respond to HTTP methods other than get. So put, patch, delete, but basically there isn't a component that will be rendered for this route. And if we just return null, then this action is essentially not doing anything. And then back over in our index route, we could either wrap this button in a form, which submits to this handle validate action, or if we want to simulate this behavior in a function, we can create a new function called handle validate. And this one is going to be an arrow function, which uses a fetcher which we need to declare above. So we'll say const fetcher is equal to calling the use fetcher hook. And this comes in from at remix run slash react. So now we can use this fetcher to simulate submitting a form and the data that we want to submit is null. The action that we want to submit to is slash handle validate. And the method that we want to use is post. And so now when we click our button, we want to call handle validate. And now if we open up the console and click this load button a few times, we'll see that each time we're fetching data from our index loader. And the cool thing here is this isn't just going to call the loader for our index route, just because this logic is in that file. It's actually going to call all of the loaders for any route that is active on the page. So even in this simple example without a whole bunch of nested routing, we have this index route, but we also have our root route active. So if we copy our loader from here and head over to our root.tsx file, and if we paste that under this meta function and we can update our console log here to say we're fetching data for our root loader. And now if we refresh the page, and maybe clear out our console here and click load, you'll see that we're both fetching data for the root loader as well as our index loader. But this feels a little bit hacky. We have this empty action here, which is sure to confuse future developers that might be working on this project. 
And in our index.tsx file, we have all of this logic simulating submitting a form. But the only reason that we're doing that is because we have this like insider information that Remix is going to automatically call all of our loaders when the action completes. Surely there is a cleaner way. And thankfully, now there is. So let's replace this fetcher with a revalidator. And we can get this by calling the use revalidator hook. And this comes in from at remix run slash react. And while we're thinking about it, we can just get rid of this use fetcher import. And now down in our handle validate function, instead of simulating a form submitting, we can simply call revalidator dot revalidate. And let's make sure this is still functioning correctly. So if we click load, we're calling both of our loaders. And if we keep clicking it, we can call them over and over again. Now we obviously don't want the user to have to click a button to refresh the page. Otherwise we'd just get them to click this refresh button that's already here. What we really want is anytime the state of our user changes, so anytime they sign in or sign out with Superbase, we want to revalidate all of the data on the page. So let's start by heading over to database.new to create a new Superbase project. And I'm going to call this one Remix Revalidate On Demand, but you can call it whatever you like. I'm going to click to generate a secure password and make sure you copy this value into something like a password manager as this is the password to your database and the only time that you'll see it. And then select a region that's close to your users. I'm going to be the only user of this one today, so I'm going to select Oceana in Sydney, which is closest to me. I'm going to leave this one on the free plan and click Create New Project. And while this is setting up our project, let's go and install the Superbase.js library to talk to this Superbase database from our Remix application. So let's quit our development server and type npm install, or i, at superbase slash superbase dash js. And once that's finished, we can create a new .env file. And so this needs to be at the rootmost part of our project. So make sure you're out in this section. And then I'm going to create a new file, which is a .env file. And in here, I want to declare a superbase underscore URL and a superbase underscore anon underscore key. And now hopefully we've stalled long enough that our Superbase instance is up and running, which looks like that's the case because it's saying, welcome to your new project. So now if we head over to settings and then API, we can copy our Superbase URL from here. And then our Superbase anon key under our project API keys. And we want this anon public key. Copy that from there and paste it in here. And once we save this file, we can then run our development server again, so npm run dev. And now these two environment variables, our URL and our anon key, will only be available server side. So that's in our loader and action functions in Remix. But since we want to create our Superbase instance client side, because we want to use it to sign our users in and out, we need to pipe these variables through from our loader. So if we go back over to root.tsx, and then here in our loader, we can create a new variable called env, and this is going to be equal to an object with our superbase underscore URL set to process.env.superbase underscore URL and our superbase anon key. And this is unhappy because I forgot my comma here. And then we can return a JSON object from our loader with our environment variables. Now we can access this return value in our component by saying const and we can just destructure env. And this is equal to calling use loader data, which is a hook that comes from at remix run slash react. And then if we have a look at the type for our env object here, we'll see that it's implicitly set to any. And this is because remix doesn't know what we're going to send back from our loader. But we can fix this by changing the signature of our loader function to say that the arguments that we're passing into this loader are an empty object, which is of type loader args. And that one comes in from at remix run slash node. Or if you selected a Cloudflare project or a Dino project at the start, it would be coming in from those runtimes. We can now tell our use loader data hook to infer the type that is returned from that loader by saying type of loader. And now if we have a look at our EMV object, we'll see the shape of our environment variables, so our superbase URL and superbase anon key. Now this is telling us that these are either strings or undefined. And so we can say that this process.env.superbase URL is always going to be a string, as is our superbase anon key. And now if we save and have a look at our env object, we can see that they are most definitely strings. And so now we want to create our new superbase client. 
by calling the create client function. And that comes in from at superbase slash superbase JS. And this function takes in our env dot superbase underscore URL and our env dot superbase a non key. Now it's important that there's only a single instance of our Superbase client across all of our components. So we can make sure that create client is only called once by wrapping it in a call to use state. And that comes in from react. And then we want to pass this an arrow function, which then calls create client. And then when we call use state, we get back an array with a getter and a setter, but we only actually care about that first value, which is our Superbase client. And so now we want to use our Superbase client to sign our user in and out. So let's create a new function called sign up. This is going to be equal to an arrow function. And in here, we're going to call superbase.auth.sign up and pass it an email, which I'm going to set to john at superbase.com and then a super secure password like super secure. And so calling this function will create our user for the first time, but then we want to also be able to sign them in. So we'll create a function called sign in, and this one is going to call superbase.auth.signin with password, and we'll give it the same email and password. And then we want one more function to sign out. And so this one calls superbase.auth.sign out, and we don't need to pass an email or a password. We then want to render out some buttons to be able to call these functions. So in between our body and our outlet, We'll render out one button, which when clicked is going to call the sign up function. And the text within our button is going to be sign up. We can then create another button for signing in, which calls the sign in function and sign out, which obviously calls the sign out function. And so now if we save and head back over to our application, so open a new tab for localhost over port 3000, we'll see that we now have our three buttons from our root .tsx file and then our load button from our index route. So if we click sign up, we're not going to get any feedback here because we haven't implemented that. But if we have a look at Superbase under authentication and then users, we'll see that this has created our new john at superbase.com user and it's waiting for verification. And so this is the email that was automatically sent to my user to confirm my email address. So if I click confirm my mail, it's going to open in the wrong browser. But if I then close that and go back to my Superbase instance, and reload my users, we'll see that we're no longer waiting for verification. So we can now go to our Remix application and we can click sign in and sign out and see that absolutely nothing is happening on the page. But if we open up our console and go across to the network tab and then click sign in, we'll see that it made a fetch request which returned a 200. And if we look under application and look at localhost over port 3000 in local storage, we'll see that we have this auth token with our access token from Superbase. And if we were to click sign out, we'll see that that disappears. So this is definitely working to sign in our user and sign them out. And so when our user signs in or signs out, we want Remix to recall all the active loaders as if we've clicked this load button. And so we need to know when the state of our user changes. And thankfully Superbase exposes a hook for just that. So here in our root.tsx file, above our auth functions, we're going to call use effect, which comes in from React. This then takes a callback function, which we want to call as soon as our component mounts. And in the body of our function, we can say superbase.auth.onauth state change. And then this will take a callback function that Superbase will call anytime the auth state of our user changes. And they will also pass us an event. So let's console log out that event. And let's also create a revalidator by calling the use revalidator hook, which again comes in from at remix run slash react. And then after we've console logged out our event, we would like to call revalidator dot revalidate. And then to clean up our subscriptions, this superbase dot on or state change function will give us back some data. And then that will have a subscription. And then we want to return an arrow function from our use effect, which can call subscription.unsubscribe. And now that our use effect has external dependencies on Superbase and Revalidator, we can add them to our dependency array here. And now if we open up our dev console and clear it out and open up our browser and click sign in, we'll see that Remix automatically called both of our loaders. And again, if we sign out, Remix will go and revalidate our data again. Awesome. 
so Super Bass and Remix can work seamlessly together to keep our data in sync with what the user should be able to see. Now we didn't go into it here because it's a whole topic on its own, but this is particularly useful when using row-level security policies for authorization and the Superbase auth helpers to manage auth sessions with cookies. This allows us to detect who the user is server-side and fetch only the data that they should be able to see. If that's something you're interested in learning, then you should definitely check out my brand new, entirely free Egghead course, where we build a real-time chat application using Superbase and Remix. We go much more into depth into fetching data server-side, generating TypeScript definitions with the Superbase CLI, and merging real-time changes from our database with our existing loader data. Now you can find a link to that one as well as some other helpful resources in the description below, but hopefully you found this one useful all on its own, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.